Hello and welcome back to It's Tech Time. Thank you so much for joining me here again in this video three of this Tmux 5 video series. Tmux is really a useful tool that can enhance your workflow in the Linux terminal. And this series is going to teach you everything you need to know about Tmux. Here in video three, we're going to talk about Tmux and Tmux windows. So let's get started. All right, let's begin. So here I have Tmux open already. And if you will look at the footer, you may notice that it looks a little different than it has in previous videos already. And it looks different because right now I have four different Tmux windows open. Looking from left to right, you see window one, window two, window three, and window four. I just wanted you to go ahead and get a look at of what this feature looks like. So currently we are in the first window and you can tell that by looking at the asterisk beside window one. So in this window, I'm going to simply run htop, but since I have Tmux running right here in its own window and it's taken up the entire screen. But here's the catch. We've been working with Tmux windows this entire time. Whenever you create a Tmux session, you have at least one window open. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to switch to a different window and I'll show you shortly how to do that. But now we have a new window that has very little going on and it probably looks a lot more like what we've been seeing in the previous video. Again, anytime you are using Tmux, you're using at least one window. So in essence, we have I've been working with Windows this entire time. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reset this entire session so that we can go through the whole process of creating Windows. And now we're back to an empty terminal. So I will simply run Tmux and we have a brand new Tmux session open. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the process of creating a window inside of Tmux. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the Tmux command with a special option. Even though we're inside of a Tmux window, we can still run Tmux commands inside of Tmux. There are a few commands that we can't run inside of Tmux, but we're not going to get into that in this video. But what we are going to do is we're going to run Tmux and then new hyphen window. And just like that, we have a new window open. We've created a new window inside of Tmux. If you look down here at the bottom, we now have window zero named bash, window one also named bash. We'll be renaming those shortly, but the thing to keep in mind right now is that when you create those windows, Tmux will start numbering everything from zero and each new window gets the next available number. And just like I did a minute ago, I was able to type tmux new hyphen window to create a new window. But there's an even easier way to create windows inside of tmux. What you can do is send the prefix key, control B, and then type C for create. And as you can see down at the bottom, we now have four windows open. But how do we switch between these windows? Well, here's what you can do. You can hit, you can send the prefix, control B, and then type the P key or previous and as indicated at the bottom by the asterisk sign we have moved back a window so we'll do prefix and then p for previous and move back again prefix p for previous move back again and as you can tell by the asterisk at the bottom we moved from right to left but now how do you move forward a screen well that's easy you simply send the prefix and then type in for next prefix in for next prefix in for next and we've moved all the way from the left to the right this time Sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to let y'all know how much I really enjoy creating this content for you. It's a whole lot of fun doing this. If you enjoy this content that I'm producing, then please consider helping its tech time grow. There are several different ways you can help support us. You can hit the like button, you can subscribe, you can share this video with somebody that may find it useful, or you can leave a comment showing your support down below. You can click one of the affiliate links located in the video description and try out a virtual cloud server hosted by Linode for free. This video is not sponsored by Linode. I'm just a big fan of their upfront pricing and pretty much every command line you see me use in my videos is on a server being hosted by Linode. You can also contribute directly to his tech time by, by visiting our merchandise store located at the link in the video description. Contributing to the channel in any way, whether it's big or small, helps to keep us motivated to continue to produce content. Thank you guys so much for joining me and now let's get back to the video. So just keep in mind, it was the C key for create, the P key for previous window, and the N key for next window. And each of these Tmux windows are completely independent of the other. So if we run the ls command here in window four, and then send the prefix and hit N for next, which sends us all the way back to the first window since we were at the last window. Then in this window, we can run the top command, and then we'll send the prefix key and hit previous to return to the last one in the file. And you'll see that the ls command is still there. htop didn't come along with it. And then I'll send the prefix and then in for next and return to the previous window that is running nothing but top. 
and that was able to continue running regardless of what I did because each of these windows run independent of each other. But how do we get rid of a window? What if you want one of these windows to completely go away? So what I want to do is kill this entire window all at once. And how I will do that is by sending the prefix key, control B, and then the ampersand. And you'll see I have a message here asking me if I'm sure I want to kill this window and it named it top. Tmos will typically name the window based off of whatever is currently running in it. And it will ask me to type Y for confirm or N for no. I'm gonna do Y for confirm and there goes that window. That window has been completely killed. Now I can kill another window by moving to the window I wanna close by hitting the prefix key, control B, and then P for previous. And now I'll hit control B, the ampersand key, and I'll hit Y to confirm and there goes that window. And now we're down to just two windows. And what I'm gonna do now is move to the first window and I'm gonna run H top again. And now that that is open, I will move to window number three. Now, as you've probably guessed by now, the number that Tmux assigns to the window is assigned in the order of which it is first created. So here I am in window two, but Tmux has it labeled as window three, which is just something to keep in mind as we go through this Tmux series. Now, I'm currently in window three, and in window one, I have HTOP currently running. Now, Tmux automatically named this window HTOP because it's currently running HTOP which is perfectly fine because that is what is currently running in this window. But we can name these windows whatever we want to. So maybe you don't want this window to be called HTOP, maybe you wanna name it something else. So how do you do that? So to rename a window, you simply make sure you're in the window you want to rename. And you do that by looking at which window has the asterisk beside it. Then once you're inside that window, you're gonna hit the prefix key, control B, and then comma. And now you have a message at the bottom of the screen asking you to confirm the rename window. And you simply backspace out the current name Maybe you want to call this monitoring and then click enter. And now that window is called monitoring window. And as we learned in the previous video, if you want other resources running in this monitoring tab, you can create a split. So we'll do the prefix control B followed by the percent symbol. And now we have a vertical split across our screen. And in this screen, you can run something like sudo apt update. So now what we'll do is we'll send the prefix along with next and move to the next window. And as you can see in this window, there's nothing currently running. And there's no split in this window like you had in the previous one. So here you have a split and then no split. Split, no split. You get the idea. And the reason why is because each of these windows are completely independent of each other. So here I can create a horizontal split this time. I'll do the prefix key, control B, followed by double quotes. And now I have a split horizontally on the screen where I can have something running in the top pane and then something else running in the second pane. And this is completely isolated from my first window, my monitoring window. So as you can see, you can customize each window exactly how you want to. Each window is independent. We can create a window by sending the prefix key and then type in C for create. We can switch between windows by sending the prefix key and then P for previous window or N for next window. And you can rename a window by sending the prefix key and then comma. Now another way you can rename a window is by typing Tmux rename dash window and then the new name window two for example and then click enter and if you notice down at the bottom the name of this current tmux window has changed to window 2 now while that works i personally prefer to send the prefix control b followed by the comma key to rename the window in my opinion that's faster so i'll do the prefix control b and then i'll type comma for key and i'm given the option to rename the window and i'm going to back out window 2 and i'm going to do new hyphen name and then click enter so if you wanted to come up with a custom naming scheme, now you can do that. And just like always, if we detach from Tmux by doing control B and then typing the D key for detach, we can simply type Tmux attach and we're right back where we left off at. Isn't that really cool? This is especially helpful if you're dealing with a remote server and your internet connection gets lost in the middle of an update, for example. You can just reconnect to it. The update will continue to run in the background until you reconnect to the server. And just like that, here we are at the end of video three in this Tmux 5 video series. I thank y'all all so much for sticking it through to the end of this video. I know we are going through this information kind of fast for some people, but I want you to take your time and practice what we've covered between the videos to make sure that we're learning everything that we are supposed to learn. And then in next week's video, we will continue learning more about Tmux and how it can enhance your workflow when inside of a Linux terminal. Until then, I will see y'all next week.